The video today is for you if you want to train unpacking samples with binary refinery a little, or maybe even with CyberChef. I mean, you can repeat the same using CyberChef. So what are we going to do? We are going to unpack a, well, very common remote access malware named Xworm. And the loader is one I have seen a lot lately. So this loader is a, it starts with JScript, it continues with PowerShell, and then it finally injects a .NET assembly. Today we are looking at a JScript sample. Let's check it out. So currently we have 14 out of 60. Two days ago, when I checked Varistoto, it was at like two out of 60 detections on Varistoto. And we can see here that it's supposedly exaverb. For instance, Trend Micro, they have .js dot. So this is likely JavaScript or JScript malware. And exaverb is actually .NET. So what we expect here is maybe a JScript malware with exaverb as a payload. So let's look into this file. And Zenbox also claims it found a configuration that may be attributed to Xworm. Community tab, well, that's me. So um, the name is very interesting. So we have .pdf, but then some space .js. So the, the actual extension is .js. Uh, here it has a specific version of Xworm. So that's a very good indicator that this is correct because how would they get this version if they didn't look into the actual config of this file? And we see also some IP address here and some AES key. So, all right, let's look into this file. 1.6 megabytes for JScript is rather big. By the way, if you want to follow along, I always put the samples in the video description below. So here's our sample and we open it up in Notepad++. This is what it looks like and that's terrible. It's like the identifier of the first variable is like that long and then you have the next identifier, which is also very long and it goes on like that. So the reason all this obfuscation is just simply having very long identifiers. We can solve this by removing this word because at some point the identifiers need to be different from each other. So if we remove this repeating word, it should actually be enough. Gonna use binary refinery for that. So I was just checking on why my system is lagging and it seems Notepad has some issues with this file. So <laughs> I'm gonna kill Notepad, I guess. And now my system is back to normal. All right. So what we're gonna do is replace this term with nothing. So this took a few seconds and now let's check out our resub file and this looks way better. So <laughs> Notepad is also not complaining that much anymore and we have reduced the size tremendously. Next thing we're gonna do is just rename some of those variables here to something that makes more sense. So press replace all. At this point, it shouldn't make any troubles anymore. So, and here we have, I don't know what that is, just gonna name it A1.
because this is like some array composed of this this string deobfuscation string array. So and the next one that's the same. So I'm gonna just name it B2, I guess. And this one also the same, just gonna name it C3. And now it would make sense to put it into a beautifier. So let's copy and paste the script and I'm gonna open up astexplorer.net. You should set it to JavaScript and the Babel slash parser. And I'm just gonna copy and paste it into this window here. And let's just make it pretty and remove this transformation. And now I copy and paste it from here. So let's save this. Why does it look gray now? Okay, I found the styling to be slightly irritating because of the background that was um, grayish. Uh, so I had to change this right now. I don't know if an update changed that. Oh, well, wait, I'm not sure if that's better here. So what's happening here? We can see like this is... Um, a relatively classic obfuscation technique. So we have this string array that consists of all of the pieces that make up the strings. So it's actually it's actually a string array. And now we build some sort of result string array by concatenating the different pieces in a different order. So this is changing the order of the contents of this first array. Then we do the same. We again change the order of the contents. And not only that, it also concatenates some of the strings already. You can see that here. So it builds up strings. And here we change the order again. And here again. The B2 in the end is just containing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven strings. And those strings are then subsequently used here. So in order to deobfuscate that, the easiest is to just execute this part of the script and print the contents of B2. So let's do that. I'm gonna use programvis.com, paste this in here, and then we just print B2. And here is B2. So this isn't anything that where we need to write a script or something because that's not much, right? So this is index 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So we can now get rid of all of that. And we can just replace this manually because it's just six strings here. Seven. And we are done. So this is the whole script. Like this, this <laughs> more than one megabyte script deobfuscates to this script. And now we see the download URL here. So this is where it downloads the payload from. It sleeps three seconds and uh, then it deletes itself. Also, it's using wscript ch to run the atom XML. So the interesting part is now what's inside this atom XML. So let's look back at the virus total summary and if we look at the relations we can see here contacted urls and there is our adam.xml file and last scan it was still alive so let's look into this part here so here we have it 
and we see some of it detected already as malicious or phishing and we have the body um, of this file so we can actually check this now some people might uh, might ask like how how would i go about downloading this file safely i think the safest way for you if you do if you have a meta lab at home would be to use a sandbox like um any dot run or any anything where you get access to the file after the download for instance with any dot run you could access this url and or even execute the JScript maver and then download the file afterwards in a safe way. So uh, that would be my recommendation, but you could also probably whip up a script that is able to um, use a proxy and then something like curl with a proxy and then put it into an archive with infected password. So something like that might work as well. Just don't do it from a browser or anything. Even if it's in the Mather VM, don't use a browser to download such files. It would be kind of stupid. Only two out of 60 detection rate. That's not much. And ESET says it's a PowerShell downloader. Uh, yeah, that's going to be interesting. So here's the Adam XML. I downloaded it from Boris Toto. Let's look into this. Mm -hmm. The PowerShell highlighting didn't do much here. That's a bit weird. Anyhow, this script looks interesting. And now I see why he said says it's a downloader that's because it picks um, this pdf file from mediafire.com but seeing that the original downloader was named like a pdf i would guess this is a decoy file so it simply downloads that and shows it so that you don't suspect that some malicious stuff is also going on in the background um Oh, nice. There are still some comments from the Mavic author here. So I'm going to turn off the word wrap here. That should make it a little bit easier. Yeah. So here's one interesting, very large array. And here's another one. Wait. Maybe we should look at the end of this. Maybe I shouldn't have turned off the word wrap. Let me put this back we search for the next quote um yeah that was the reason i was looking so here is some replace going on it's replacing parts of the string the special characters with ones and zeros so this is something we will have to do as well if we want to decode this but apart from that it just seems to be some binary array, right? Um, okay, let's turn the word wrap off again. So array one, array two, and it's calling uh, this function on array two, and this function on, this is what I would call array three. Uh, so the very same function, let's see what this function is doing it's defined here and converting it from binary to from <laughs> from the binary numbers to an actual binary that doesn't look too hard to decode manually with for instance binary refinery so i'm going to try that What do we want to have? We actually want to have, let's try, let's try the second array here. Let's put this on a new line so I can see it better. So let's just carve the longest string and see what comes up here. 
like which which string it is. And it looks like it looks like the second one. Yeah. Or another way another way you could do the same is just specifying we want strings that are at least thousand characters long and then we can see what we get. So we should get three of them. These are all of the the three big arrays here. And then we can say scope one to get the second. Verify it works. And I don't want any of those quotes. I don't want any of those quotes, so we snip them off. And now let's start uh, to replace all of those special characters with the ones and zeros. For that, we need to do the resub. So we see here the replacement of star with 1000. So I'm gonna do that. So all we got to do now is um, convert this from base to and we see we get another script. So let's dump this. I'm going to name it array one because it's index one. So array index one might be more precise. All right, let's open this in notepad. So what's it doing here? We have another function that's probably converting this. We have another array here with some splits and another replacement. All right, let's try to decode this as well. Now we can do the very same thing here that we just did. Just this time I know for sure it's the longest one. That looks right. And we can see here it splits this on this O, big O character. So we're going to do the same. And then what it does is it takes the um, second from the result array. So index one, that's the second one. So you say scope one. And another split on, I think that's a small L. Anyway, I will copy it. Scope zero. And then we get the pinch array. And this is then saved into pinch R. So to get rid of this warning with the invisible chunks, we should probably execute Carl uh, so that this doesn't happen anymore. Anyhow, we still got the same, very same replacements here. So these are the ones we want to do. So 
So after doing all of the recepts, let's see what we get. It's not looking good. Aye, that's better. And we can dump this. But I will name payload one. It seems to be a part of executable file, and we're gonna look into that. Firstly, let's see how this payload one is being used. So we know this payload is in this binary data variable. Let's actually turn on another language highlighting because for some reason the PowerShell doesn't work here. Yeah, that's JavaScript. <laughs> okay. Um, so it's put in here, it's put into pinch. Pinch is put into R pinch R, which is then put into pinches. And here we have um, the Kim Carden function, which just converts all of the ones and zeros into binary data. And that's put into the data one array. And that's finally what's being loaded as an assembly in this step. And we have the call to execute command, which executes this. So, and what this is doing, it's using this assembly to get type of the name a.b. So it's accessing the class B. And then it invokes method C in class B. So that's the method C being invoked here. And where is it being invoked? Uh, so it takes arguments, namely this file. So the second data file, which we don't, de which we didn't decode yet, and um, this path. So these here are very typical path path targets for process injection of .NET files. So already just from reading what this code does what we decoded as payload one here is likely just some assisting file to inject this code of the original payload into these processes here. Let's quickly check this. So when I put it into detected easy, what do I expect to see? Yeah, it should be a .NET file. So let's look and we see library.net protector confuser. So yeah, it's a library. Let's see the string listing. So there isn't much in terms of strings. It's probably highly obfuscated. But maybe let's just find the class that we saw there that is being used for the injection. A, B, and C. This is method C. And we already know that's the path and that's the injected data. So seeing that this is being called here, this method might have to do something with that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's follow this method. Same here. So this is pretty much obfuscated. It is actually not worth it to deobfuscate this because in the end we just want the actual payload. And I'm not so much interested in seeing how this particular library works. Let's try to get the actual payload. And for that, we should look again where it gets it from. So this is Mutal. 
And this is probably part of the function that we had above, like of this atom. Let's change this. Let's search for Mutal. Ah, okay. So this is one of the other large binary arrays. And it's also not used in this file. Is it the first binary array? Yes. Let's wait. Yes. This is the third and second, the first. So zero, index zero array. So we just decode it the same way we did it with uh, script array index one. So now we have script array index zero. And it also just calls this Kim Karn to convert it from these um, ones and zeros. So it seems that there's not much to decode except let's turn on the word wrap again, except for the replacements at the end. So those are the placements. I will put them on a new line so it's a bit easier. And if I had not closed my terminal already, I could just reuse the last command that I had. So before I forget it, I should probably rename the payload one. I'm calling it inject DLL because that's what it is. we get the payload. So this is almost exactly like the um, decoding we did for the, the, the injection DL. So let's dump this. And let's see what we got here. I'm going to open it here. So we already see this is a .NET assembly probably written in Visual Basic because it is using Visual Basic libraries. So technically you can use Visual Basic libraries from other languages, but most people don't do that. So it's a fair assumption that this is also written in Visual Basic. I'm seeing some interesting mentions here. And this is some base64. Checking for install antivirus products. And these look like they could be some anti-debug mechanisms or checking if it's a VM. Um, so shutdown commands. Offline keylogger not enabled. Some browser agents. So this looks like the actual payload. And since it is also .NET, let's open it up here. Directly at the beginning, we see the config. Just that the config is not there in plain text. It is being decrypted first. So we have settings host pre-initialized with our, well, base64 strings. 
But I guess it's not only base64. If we check the decrypt function, it's uh, some AES. So for Xworm, I have written a decryptor that can decode the config. So we could try that. So let's get it. It's that uh, github.com struppige hedgehog tools. You will find Xworm Red. And we simply download this. Also, the requirements is just Python net. So we can simply, let's download this too. Also, I think I got this dnlib in some of the others. Yeah, let's get that one as well. So now for it to work, you need to unblock this file first because otherwise it will refuse to load it. Open PowerShell. Gonna try some nick pot pip install requirements could not load the end up or one of its dependencies. Let's see. All right, so, and now we just put our file there. And that's it. So that's our config here. Decoded config. Look at it. And this is our decrypted config. As you can see, we have now decrypted the host, the port. Um, the key is the the key that is being used to decrypt these values here and then we have some sort of splitter so i guess if you want to add more files or uh, i'm not sure exactly where this is being used we would have to check the code but um, very often to uh, decode an array of values they will often use some um, unique string that is used for splitting so spl is like for split um, sleep, I would not assume this value here in sleep. I would assume that there should be something like a number that says how long it has to sleep. Here we see the version number 5.2 and USB might be some name for the, um, some file name for a USB spreading mechanism. Again, we will have to check the code exactly to see how it is being used. And then there's the mutex with um, a weird string here. So th to make sure it's not running several times. If you want to learn meta analysis from the ground up, please check the link in the video description below. It contains a coupon link to my Udemy course for beginners.